refactoring, especially later on this year, where we're not going to be dealing with quadratics. We're going to be dealing with polynomials. So one of them, as example, is here is a polynomial. It's not a quadratic. Um, so it's raised to the third power. And we can solve this actually by factoring. And the technique we use is called grouping. What you do is you group the first two terms, and then group the second two terms. Then what you do is you look at each term separately, and you factor out the greatest common factor. So if I look in this first parentheses, I see that they both share a, I can factor out a 3 and a x squared. So I factor out a 3x squared. By factoring out a 3x squared, I'm left with a 2x plus 3. And you can always, again, verify that you factored out the GCF, GCF correctly by multiplying that back through. And can we verify it looks like it's good? Yes. This isn't a number. I'm just doing a random problem. Um, now we need to see if we factor out anything here in the next one. And this one where it kind of gets confusing, you guys have a problem like this. That's why I decided to do one. This doesn't have a common factor, right? But to do factoring by grouping, we have to have kind of two groups. So what you can do is you can factor out a positive 1. If you factor out a positive 1, you're left with 2x plus 3, parentheses, equals 0. So the whole reason why we did that is because now you guys can see what do they have in common? Their color is blue. The 2x plus 1. Inside the parentheses, the 2x plus 1. Now again, these are two different terms because they're separated by addition. So we have this term and we have that term. And both of those two terms have a 2x plus 3 in common. So guess what we do? We factor out the 2x plus 3. When we factor out the 2x plus 3, we're left with a 3x plus 1. 3x squared, I'm sorry, plus 1. And then that's equal to 0. So now guess what? Now we have rewritten this expression as a product equal to 0. That's very nice, right? Now we have a product equal to 0. So therefore, now we can apply the 0 product property. So you set both of them equal to 0. So therefore, subtract 3, divide by 2, x equals negative 3 halves. This one's not as, as not as fun. So I subtract 1, I get 3x squared equals negative 1, divide by 3, divide by 3, x squared equals negative 1 third. Remember to get rid of the square root, or the squaring, you take the square root on both sides. So therefore, I get x equals plus or minus. Um, now can we take the square root of a negative number? No, so I can take that out as i. And therefore, I can rewrite this as the square root of 1 over 3. However, we want to see if we can simplify that, which we can. So I'll do that over here. x equals plus or minus i times the square root of 1 over the square root of 3. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the square root of 1 is just 1. But I want to rationalize my denominator. So I multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. Again, another algebra skill. So my final answer is x equals plus or minus i. Square root of 3 times 1 is just the square root of 3 over 3. And that would be your answer. Zers, plural, right? 